Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to two-way MANOVA. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. A MANOVA is a multivariate analysis of variance. So it's an extension of a univariate analysis of variance where you have more than one dependent variable. So in a univariate ANOVA, you can only have one dependent variable, one outcome. In a MANOVA, you can have multiple dependent variables. So a two-way MANOVA looks at the difference between means in two or more unrelated groups across a linear combination of the dependent variables and includes two factors or independent variables. So that gives us three null hypotheses. So I'm going to use an example for these null hypotheses. Let's say that you had a group of participants and you wanted to look at differences across two independent variables, gender, so that has two levels, male and female, and treatment. And let's say for treatment, you use three levels, CBT, existential therapy, and psychodynamic therapy. And you wanna see if there's any differences across those levels, male and female, and the three levels of treatment on two dependent variables, an instrument designed to measure depression and an instrument designed to measure anxiety. So you have three null hypotheses here. The means of the first factor are equal. That's the first null hypothesis. The means of the first factor are equal. The first factor in this case would be gender. The second null hypothesis, the means of the second factor are equal. In this case, treatment. And the third null hypothesis is that there's no interaction between the factors or independent variables. So there's no gender times treatment effect. Now in working with the two-way MANOVA, you may need to use a post hoc test. You would need to use a post hoc test if one or more of your independent variables has three or more levels. So using the example of gender and treatment, the gender independent variable has two levels, male and female. So there's no need for a post hoc test. You'll always know where the difference is. So if the MANOVA indicates there's a statistically significant difference on that independent variable gender, you know that difference is between male and female. Those are the only two levels of that independent variable. However, on the treatment independent variable, that would have three levels, CBT, existential, and psychodynamic. If you have a statistically significant result for that independent variable, you don't know where the difference is. It could be between CBT existential, CBT psychodynamic, or existential and psychodynamic. It could also be between two of those pairwise combinations or all three. So a post hoc test will tell you where the difference is. Now in considering a two-way MANOVA, one question that comes up is why not simply use separate two-way ANOVAs? So one two-way ANOVA would include gender and treatment and the dependent variable depression and the other two-way ANOVA, the same independent variables and the dependent variable anxiety. We could use two two-way ANOVAs instead of one two-way MANOVA. The reason we may want to use a two-way MANOVA instead of two two-way ANOVAs is that the two-way MANOVA has more power than separate two-way ANOVAs. Power means the ability to detect a difference that's actually there. So there could be an instance where each two-way ANOVA returns a p-value of greater than 0 0.05 a non-statistically significant finding. Yet if you load those two dependent variables into a two-way MANOVA, you could find a statistically significant difference, a difference that each two-way ANOVA missed. 
Now there are instances where you may consider using a two-way ANOVA, multiple two-way ANOVAs, instead of one two-way MONOVA. When you have dependent variables that are uncorrelated, that would be a time to consider multiple two-way ANOVAs, or if your dependent variables are highly correlated. So let's take a look at the elements of a two-way MONOVA. In a two-way MONOVA, you need two independent variables, two factors. Each factor needs to have two or more levels. The levels need to be independent. You need independent groups. And this is a between subjects design. So a participant would belong to only one level of each independent variable. They would belong to either the male or female category and they would belong to either the CBT, existential, or psychodynamic level. In a two-way MANOVA, you have two or more dependent variables. And these dependent variables, just as is the case with ANOVA, need to be measured at the interval or ratio level of measurement, which we refer to as the continuous level of measurement. There is, however, a difference between interval and ratio. A ratio variable has a meaningful distance between the observations and a true zero. Like the Kelvin temperature scale, the zero represents an absence of the construct the Kelvin scale measures, heat. A good example for interval is the Fahrenheit scale. Fahrenheit also measures heat, but the zero on the Fahrenheit scale doesn't represent an absence of heat. Now taking a look at the assumptions for two-way MANOVA, we need independence of observations. That's the first assumption. So one observation, one score on any of the dependent variables cannot be dependent on another score. They need to be independent. You also need multivariate normality when considering using a two-way MANOVA. And the concept of multivariate normality is difficult to directly measure. It's difficult to directly assess multivariate normality. So it's not unusual that we use a few different methods to indirectly tell us if we have multivariate normality or not. One method is to test for univariate normality. So in that instance, the residuals must be normally distributed for each level of the two independent variables. And if you have the two variables I've used in the example, gender and treatment, gender has two levels, treatment has three levels, that gives you six distributions to test. These distributions could be tested with a Shapiro-Wilk test. A Shapiro-Wilk test returns a probability value, a p-value. If that value is less than 0 0.05, that would lead us to believe that the distribution is normal. If it's greater than 0 0.05, that would lead us to believe that we have violated that assumption of normality. We'd also want to look at the skewness, the kurtosis, and the histogram for each distribution. If you have a univariate normality for all six of those combinations, in that example, the two by three MANOVA, that would lead us to believe we have multivariate normality. We'd also want to look at the Mahalanobis distance. The Mahalanobis distance is a way to determine if we have multivariate outliers. So if you check that and there are no multivariate outliers, that would also indicate that you could be meeting the assumption of multivariate normality. Again, you can't directly assess it, so we're using other pieces of evidence to try to get some sort of image of whether we have multivariate normality or not. The next assumption is the assumption of linearity. And this means that we have linear relationships between all pairs of the dependent variables for each combination of the levels of the two independent variables. We can test the assumption of linearity by using a scatter plot. 
The last assumption is homogeneity of variance covariance matrices. And this assumption is often tested using boxes M, the boxes M test. So you have independence of observations, multivariate normality, linearity, and homogeneity of variance covariance matrices as the assumptions for two-way MANOVA. I hope you found this introduction to two-way MANOVA to be helpful. Thanks for watching.